Hello and welcome to another Web Tools video. Today I'm going to showcase how to insert shapes into a Google Slides presentation. This, this slide here was designed all with shapes. Now while it's not necessarily a uh, artist's dream, it does showcase a number of features that you may not know were available in Google Slides. So let me show you some of what I've done here. So first I'm going to actually start just by adding a new slide and then I'll show you how to insert these shapes. If you come up here to the toolbar, this shape tool, you have a few options. I'm not going to go over all the shapes options because there are literally tons of them, but that's the basics of how you insert a shape. All I did was grab my shape tool and then drag from left to right. You can also go from right to left or however you want. Wherever you click, that's going to be your anchor point. Now, a few things when you're adjusting these, uh, these uh, shapes. Now, if you're wanting to align these shapes, you'll notice when I grab this and align it, it will align with the page. See that red line? I can put it right in the center pretty easily so it snaps to specific locations within the slide and even amongst itself. Uh, other shapes. So if you have another shape and I try to snap it here, notice it finds that right side. So it's easy to align shapes that way. Now, when you are, uh, when you are transforming shapes, in other words, when you're changing the shape of them, the shift and the control key when held can be helpful. So for example, if I grab the corner of this shape and I hold the shift key, as I'm moving it, notice it maintains its proportions. So it never really adjusts. Um, it maintains the same proportion, same ratio as far as the rectangle is concerned. If I don't hold shift, notice I'm able to actually change the proportions of that. If I hold control while I'm clicking on this, uh, while I'm adjusting, it anchors the shape. So I'm adjusting the shape here, but it anchors it based on the center of the shape instead of the, instead of one of the sides. Like if I grab it here without control and I move it like this, notice it's anchoring using this side right over here. It's anchoring using this side. However, if I hold control, all the sides move at once and they move at an equal distance as I move it around. So um, that's one thing, uh, that's, that's a few tips about uh, moving your shapes around. Now, one other detail with that control and shift, when you insert a new shape, if you want a perfectly proportional square, if you hold shift when you create that, it will keep it um, within proportions of itself. So it, or at a one-to-one -one ratio is what I should say. So now I have a perfect square. If I hold shift while I do that, same thing. If I have a circle, if I'm inserting a circle and I hold shift while I insert this, it's going to give me a perfect circle. So that's a few of the tips you can use when you hold shift or control. Now, when you're aligning shapes, some tips and tricks. So with these mountains, I aligned the shapes a little bit using some of my tools, but I'll show you with some basic squares. So let me insert a few more squares for us here. Oh, whoops, I got a click shape here. And we might just copy some of these. Okay, so first, when you move the shapes around, they do align themselves automatically. So I can align them pretty easily that way. However, if you select a group of, if you select a group of shapes like this, you can align them pretty easily by coming up here to arrange and then align either horizontally on the left, center, right, align vertically, top, middle, bottom. If I select bottom, it now aligns all of my shapes along the bottom, which can be helpful if I'm wanting all my shapes to be lined in one. Now, um, if I'm wanting to, if, if I'm wanting to uh, group my shapes, in other words, um, if I have a group of shapes, like a good example is these mountains. If I move this, Maybe I didn't, I, it just moved the one triangle. However, maybe I want to move the whole group of mountains. What I can do is if I click on a shape and then hold shift, and as I click, it will select each of the individual shapes. And then if I uh, come up here to arrange, come down to group. There's also a key command, control alt G. Now, if I hit group, what that does is this is now a single shape. So if I click on it, it grabs all those shapes all at once. If I want to undo that action, I can just come right up here to this arrange again and select ungroup. And that will put them as individual shapes again. So I'm going to go ahead and move those mountains back where they were originally. That's how you can group shapes. Um, you can also add text to any shape. If you select a shape and then double click in the center, you'll be able to add text. And that text can be formatted just like any other text in Google Slides. So if I select it, I can choose to uh, you know, center it or I can center it on the top of the shape and uh, I can format that text as such. You can also change the color of your shapes. Now, this is something that's kind of, uh, kind of cool if you select a shape. Now, in this example, I have 
oops, I'm going to hold shift, keep this proportional. I have these stars. And really what they are is they're a kind of a, a star call out shape. I'll show you what I had here. I just used the insert. Oops. Came down here to shape. And then I in the call outs, I used the 32 point call out, 32 point star. Okay. And when I added that in, um, I took away my borders, which to remove borders from a shape, you just come right up here and under border color, you're going to need to select transparent that will remove the border. I then changed the color of the shape by selecting color. Okay. And now I have kind of that star that I had before. Now, this is one thing I forgot to show you when I was showing you how to transform these yellow diamonds. Whenever you see those yellow diamonds on a shape, basically you're adjusting the shapes, um, the shape's shape, for lack of a better term. It's better just to show you. So you can see I can change how how my shape looks. I could turn it into a circle, okay, by taking away the points altogether, or I can choose basically where those star points meet. Um, so that's how I created that star shape. But one other thing that I wanted to show you with these stars is this circle that's behind the stars. So right now this shape is grouped. I'm gonna go ahead and ungroup it. But I have this circle that's behind the stars. And you notice it's, it's see-through. When I cover when I cover other shapes, you can see through it to see the shapes behind it. So um, if you insert a, here, we'll just go ahead and um, insert a new shape, a new circle here. And we'll use the shift key to keep it perfectly circular. And then, um, oh, right now um, my color is still the same. But um, if I select a different color, like let's say I select this color, and while yes, it is a lighter shade of yellow, you still cannot see through it, okay? So to actually make it see through, what you have to do is come up to your color, click on it, come down to custom, select custom, and then you have two bars, okay? You can choose to um, lighten or darken the color, but to make it see through, you're going to use this opacity bar, this bar right here. So you'll go ahead and just adjust the opacity, and then I hit OK, and you notice now it's see-through. So it maintains its color that I had before, but instead of being a, instead of being a solid color, it's now see-through. And that is the basics of how you edit shapes within Google Slides. I know I went over that really fast. If you have questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. And if there's anything that you need to know about Google Slides, let us know. Hi, thanks for watching another Web Tools video and supporting our channel. After the video, if you still have a question about something we talked about, be sure to leave a comment or hit us up on our channel. And of course, if you're interested in learning how you can use your browser to its full potential, don't forget to subscribe below.